Hi, it's Blake here with Builder Kids, and today we're going to be building a set of shelves for here and here. And we're going to be doing a little bit of welding in this project. Um, the welding is going to be in the garage, and always remember, when you're doing welding, have an adult. Okay, so we are going to make as Blake was saying, two sets of vertical shelves. So these long pieces right here are gonna be the verticals. These pieces, we're gonna weld to the back of that and they're gonna go from the, from the vertical piece back towards the wall. And then that wood, that pallet wood that we cut is gonna sit on top of the shelves and we'll probably screw that to the shelves with some, uh, some self-tapping screws. Blake is going to tell you the tools we're going to use and then he's also going to explain this little piece of metal that's right there. We're going to cut that into little pieces and we're going to use that as tabs on the bottom and on the top back of the shelves as our anchor points so that we can actually uh, anchor to the wall. Now we're going to use concrete anchors but you could build a shelf like this and attach it to drywall and use the same type of setup just maybe with a, an anchor and a, a screw or a drywall screw. So Blake why don't you tell them what we're going to do with this stuff. Okay. So we're going to be, this little piece of metal, we're going to, there are these blue lines on it, and we're going to be using the shear to cut them and put them on the bottom and top of these. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be using the welder to weld it all together. And we'll be using the square to make sure it is square. Mm -hmm. And these magnets, they help when you are when you are welding, and then just to make sure everything's even and level, we're going to be using this level. Yep, that's right. And we'll show you the the magnets. These are welding magnets, so it's nice because you don't have to clamp or hold the the pieces together. We're just doing. Um, 90 degree angles, you could do 45s or whatever on these as well. Um, we're going to do 90 so we could literally just put the magnet on it and then attach the other piece, it'll hold it in place so that when we get ready to weld, it's exactly where we want it to be. And like Blake said, um, the little metal piece has some blue lines that I drew on it. Um, this tubing is all three quarter inch square. So we're gonna cut that metal at um, three quarters of an inch wide. So it's as wide as uh, the tubes. And we're gonna make it an inch and a half long. That way it sticks out the back and it gives us enough room to get a drill in to, uh, to put the anchor in. And then, the welder is 180. Yeah, right now we're gonna we'll probably change that a little bit, but right now we have it set at uh, 12 gauge and 180 amps. Um, again, you can adjust it. This is that ESOB machine that we've talked about before. It's a smart welder, and if you adjust this up and down, you can see it changes based on the thickness. Um, and we just have it set for 12 gauge, which is about what what this is. I think this is eighth inch steel. So we are going to cut these little pieces, then we're going to get our marks. Um, this particular piece, you can make this any size you want, obviously, just like any of the projects we do. These pieces we made at five and a half feet, and these ones are 12 inches deep uh, because our pallet wood is around four inches. But we're going to put three of those per shelf. So that gives us 12 inches, around 12 inches, so these are 12 inches. So we're going to get to cutting, and then we'll show you what it looks like when we weld it too. Okay, so we have our piece of metal. This is our shear. This is a three-in-one shear from Harbor Freight. There's another video around somewhere about how to use a shear. And we're gonna put it into the blue line. There's a little mark in there. And then we're gonna pull down on this lever and it's gonna shear. So I'm gonna get this lined up and then we'll pull down on it. Uh, okay, Blake, start to pull down. Now, so you could, you, I don't know if you can see it from there, when you pull down, there's this guide that actually clamps down on the metal, holds it in place, and now as we pull it, it's going to shear this metal. Ready, pull, watch your head so you don't get conked in the head. Ready? Okay. So there's the piece that got cut off. There is the piece that we cut. So it's a real nice, clean line. So this one we don't need anymore. This one, we're going to cut four of these at three quarters of an inch, and then we'll be ready to start welding it all together. Okay, hold on a second. Start pulling down on it. 
Okay. Ready? Yeah. And there's our little three quarter inch by inch and quarter piece. We're gonna do that three more times. So here are the four pieces that we just finished cutting, and now we're gonna we started marking the metal. And since when we're done marking, we're gonna use the magnets, and we're gonna put the magnets on where we marked it, and we're gonna put the level on it and see if it's square too. And then we we use the hammer just lightly tap it up or down just to make it level. Mm -hmm. And on a different project, we also use this method. That's right. So we put a couple marks on here. So you want to grab a piece of metal and stick it on. We have our 18 inches, so we're going to line. <coughs> yep, we're going to line this up, and we're going to stick our magnet right there. And that's going to be actually, if we really want to do it, we can do a magnet on either side make sure it holds it in place for when we weld. And I'll bring the camera over here in a second so you can see what this looks like. Okay, so that's what it looks like up close. We have a mark right here, and we're gonna do the top of our shelf at 18 inches for this one. So that's the mark Blake was talking about. And you can see how these magnets give us a nice 90 degree angle. If we actually put that square on here, it would work the same way. Um, but the magnets will hold it in place while we put a weld on. So we're going to get a little weld on this side and a weld on the other side and then we're going to do that all the way up our marks and we're going to do it on this piece too. And when we're done welding this piece we're going to be using the square to make sure it's square and if it's square then we'll be good. That's right we'll double check it with that and then like Blake said we have a level what we'll use the level for for this project is when we go to actually mount it to the wall we'll take that and we'll take a bigger level and make sure that that everything is good but with these magnets being at 90 degree angles like this we know this will end up being level as long as uh, as long as this one is yep yep and there's another one there's the two foot level we use that and we also have a four foot level we'll we end up using that when we go to uh to mount this sometimes okay. it's useful to have different um different types of like longer levels than smaller levels in case you need them for different projects. Yep, that's right. Okay, so we're going to set this back up there uh, on the tripod and we're going to weld a little bit. So this is the clip for the welder and uh, we're going to be clipping it onto this and if you don't then um, it's just like it won't, it won't be as powerful. Well it won't work because this is the ground, right? So the electric welders, like a MIG or a TIG welder, works off electricity, and it creates a circuit. So this is the ground clamp that we'll put on. So you have to clamp it and have a good, a good clean ground, so it's got to be on bare metal. If you had some paint, we would have scratched the paint off, mm -hmm. like Blake just did. We'll lay that down. We got it clamped, and that way anything that we weld along here will we'll finish. This will finish the circuit for it. So if we tried to weld without it, it's not going to do anything because there's not a, a complete circuit loop. And then, Blake, you want to show them the gauge? This is um, the gauge. The gauge you would use to um, see how thick the metal is. Mm -hmm. Like here, it fits here, but there's a little bit of space. And if I try to put it in here. Oh, you could tilt it a little bit so we can see it. Yep, see it fits on that one. And the next one's too thin. It doesn't fit, so then. So you would flip it over. And it says it's one eighth. Mm -hmm. So eighth inch. So like we were talking about on the welder, for this particular welder, instead of just having to know like the amperage you need to set, we could set it at eighth. So actually right there, it says eighth inch. So we're just going to go off of that. And um, the, here are like, there are a ton of different sizes from the thinnest all the way to the thickest one, which is... Um, really thick. I don't mm -hmm. think we're going to be welding any bridges or structures with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we have our ground. We're going to get the, Blake, you want to grab the other part of the welder, the actual handle? Here's what you use to weld, but um, I'm going to set this right here. But um, if you hit these, 
This is a different type. Um, I think it's fig welding. Tig welding, yeah. These are the sticks for TIG. We're not doing that. We're going to do MIG welding today. We might today. use TIG welding in a different project. Yeah, we might use it for that other for those other shelves we're building. Mm -hmm. The MIG welding is, is a little bit easier, especially for beginners. Um, and uh, that's where we're going to go. So we're going to clip the end of this off. You can see some of that came out. Um, and then obviously we have the welding helmets definitely have to have some sort of welding helmet or goggles or glasses because you never ever want to look directly into the uh, spark of a welder because it will blind you um, I, you can have it where that you can look momentarily if it's an accident um, you're just going to see spots kind of like if you were looking at the sun for a second but that's the intensity of it. Um, you wouldn't want to stare at the sun for 10 or 20 seconds. You don't want to look directly at, uh, at a welder for, uh, while it's welding for that period of time. So well, uh, definitely get a welding helmet. These ones are these hitbox ones. We had a video on those earlier. Um, those are just from Amazon. They're actually pretty nice. I have an ESOB helmet. It was much more expensive, but honestly, I think this works about the same. And these ones have a really big uh, viewing area, which is nice. They're a little bit bigger than the one that I have. So, okay, Blake's going to cut that and then we're going to weld. Sticking out the, the uh, wire, sticking out just a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to go right in between the two joints and we're just going to give it a little zap, a couple little zaps. Now, when you're welding, if you want to, as you practice and you get better, you want to actually roll it. So, you would do real small circles and that gives you a nice clean weld across it. This welder is actually smart enough that you really could just grab it you could just start to zap it and just go right in a little line and it's going to probably still give you a decent weld so we'll probably do that but as you start to practice and get better you want to do little circles okay we're putting the welding helmets down and we're going to weld can you see it mm -hmm. okay <laughs> so it was pretty good except Blake came off the line a little bit so we instead of going straight across he came down and which is fine we'll grind all this down at the end so we're actually going to hit that again and then we'll flip it over and we're going to do the other side I'll also get started. and he's just starting okay so one thing we just realized I'm so used to working in old clothes when I'm down here that I never think about it but you also really should have a welding shirt or a welding jacket on uh, because especially when you're working this close, sparks are going to fly off. Uh, Blake got a little teeny burn mark in his shirt, which is fine, but the bigger issue is you don't want to catch yourself on fire. Uh, we don't want his shirt or his pants or anything to catch on fire, so we put a welding jacket on. Definitely another piece of safety equipment to have wear a welding jacket. Sometimes you're going to get little nubs or build up, so I just use this little air grinder, little angle grinder with a 
probably like a 40 grit disc on it, and we just knocked that down. That way when we were flipping it over, it was laying flat uh, on the table. The other thing we did was, as we were doing it, we actually clamped both sides down to make sure that it didn't twist, because as you weld stuff, I was telling Blake, it heats the metal, and depending on the thickness of the metal or how much heat you put into it, it's going to want to cause the metal to twist or warp. So if you keep it clamped down, that'll keep it uh, nice and flat and, and uh, square so that things uh, aren't going to twist and the shelves will be even. So we're going to get this one cleaned up and then we're going to do this actually three more times because we have uh, two sets of shelves we're building. Once we do that, we're going to grind down all the welds and then we're going to clean it off and uh, paint it. Oh, and then we're going to put our little tabs on the top and bottom. So we're going to show you, uh, we'll show you guys what that looks like once we get it all cleaned up and we get ready to paint. Hey, we're back. So we just ground down this and you can see there's like metal that's off. We the welds? Mm -hmm. We painted the whole thing black with this spray paint. Yeah, this is, so this is zero rust. Uh, a lot of people may not have heard of it, it's similar to Pour 15. So you guys probably saw the metal had a little bit of surface rust that we, we cleaned up. Um, but we wanted the finish to be flat black anyway, so we used uh, Zero Rust. And what that does is it will actually encapsulate the rust and it will seal it in, so we never have to worry about it uh, really coming back, especially for these because they're inside, they're not going to be exposed to the weather. And it gives us a nice, tough, durable, uh, like matte finish coating. And we're putting the um, we're putting one board at the bottom and one board at the top, just to see how it would look. Yeah, yeah. So we got all the boards cut as you guys saw before. So we put one board up here and one board down here to make sure that everything is square and aligned. And then we're going to go in and put the rest of the boards in place. And what we're doing here is we just drilled holes in the wood so that it didn't split. Essentially, we just, there's going to be three boards per shelf. So we stacked all three boards and drilled straight down through both so that the, the screws end up in the same spot. And instead of using a drill bit, I'm using one of these little self-tapping screws to, to mark uh, or to drill the holes out. So we're going to lean the wood up against like, like this is. We're going to stick a little pencil through the hole to get our mark, take that off, and we're going to use this little self-tapper because these things are fantastic, and it's the same size as the screw that we're using, um, to go in, drill it, take it out, and we put the board back in place and put it on. And you can see there's what it looks like with a screw in it. These screws that we're using are, let me see how long they are. These are, well, they say 37 millimeter. I think they're... I think they're like an inch and a quarter or something like that. But uh, you can see that's how long it is. So essentially, if you can see that there, it'll go through the wood and then down into the metal and stick. And we're just putting one, uh, one screw per board. We were originally going to do two, but we thought we'd do one because once you put a couple boards, it stiffens it all up. So that's it. Blake and I are going to start putting the rest of these shelves on, and then when it's done, we'll stand it up in place, and we'll show you what it looks like. This is the finished product, and um, we put one here, and then the other one here, and uh, we put them, we connected them to the wall. Yep, we just used little concrete anchors because we had to put it into uh, bricks, so we put it into the mortar joints. And uh, here, we'll just show you what it looks like. So you can see there are all the shelves. We just used, again, pallet wood. <clears throat> I'll cut uh, just randomly. I mean, same length, but uh, or same width, but random colors to mix it up a little bit. So that was it. <clears throat> again, these ones were, for our setup, this was uh, five and a half feet tall and 20 inches wide. Okay, so this is what it looks like on both sides of the fireplace. What do you think, Blake? Um, when you guys are building it, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and like and subscribe and hit the notification bell right down there. See ya!